This video will go over the uh, solution for the expected cash flow and variability that you uh, had to do. Specifically, I will highlight on the Palmer Heights. If you recall, is that you had two real estate projects to analyze, the Palmer Heights, as I just mentioned, and the Crenshaw Village. I'm going to focus in on the ca calculation for Palmer Heights, and as you can see that uh, I've already given you the uh, Crenshaw Village uh, uh, computations. But let's go back to the Palmer Heights. As I said, this is one of two real estate, uh, say, projects that uh, one might be interested in uh, investing in. And you can see in regard to the Palmer Heights that we have uh, cash flow, what one would expect. In other words, you can see in the first column is that we have cash flows dealing with uh, possible, one possible outcome would be receiving, we'll say 70, 75, 90, 105, 110. And for each of these possible cash flow outcomes, uh, we'll say you assigned a, a probability. In this case, uh, the probabilities are 20% for each one. Right? We, in other words, we have five possible outcomes. And since we're dealing with a probability distribution, uh, each outcome, in this case, as indicated, was assigned a probability of 20%. So from our standpoint, we wanted to come up with, okay, what's the expected uh, outcome? Or what's the expected cash flow? Or we could probably just focus in on it and say, okay, what's the expected mean? And in this particular column here, how do we derive or how do we arrive at the expected mean? Well, all what we have to do is simply take the probability, like in the first uh, possible outcome was probability is 20%, and we're going to multiply it by the cash flow of 70. So we get 14. And of course, we'd go down. Uh, for each possible outcome, or in this case, each possible cash flow identified by our random variable x, and multiply it by the probability for each one. And in this particular column, as you can see, as mentioned, 14, 15, 18, 21, and 22. Therefore, once we sum them up, we get the mean. We get the expected, expected outcome, or the expected cash flow for Palmer Heights, which is 90. And here in the last column, we have the expected mean or the expected outcome. We can determine really uh, the standard deviation. And in coming up with the standard deviation, uh, you can see we have the quantity of the value for our random variable x minus what the expected mean or the expected outcome is and we're going to square the difference and then multiply it by the probability. So for the first case now we're saying okay value for random variable x 70 minus the expected mean or the expected outcome 90 and we're going to square, so what we're saying, 70 minus 90, square it and multiply it by the probability. So in this case, it's 80. It's 45, 0, 45, 80. Sum them up and we get 250. That is not the standard deviation. That is the variance. And as I pointed out in class, don't get the variance confused with the coefficient of variation that I'll explain here uh, shortly. So we have the variance of 250. We take the square root of that, and yes, we get the standard deviation of 15.81. So when we come right down to it, uh, you have three questions to, to, uh, to solve. First question was, okay, come up with the ca expected cash flow which we've already done is 90, come up with a standard deviation, 15.81. And then the third question was, okay, calculate, compute the coefficient of variation, which is the standard deviation divided by the mean, 17.57. Uh, so, as I pointed out in class, by itself, for the coefficient of variation, is kind of meaningless. Um, we have to have something to compare it against. So, for the Crenshaw Village, um, 
The expected cash flow was 85. We had a standard deviation of 775, and we had a coefficient of variation of 9.12. That third question was, which apartment complex, which complex did indeed have more risk? Well, we can see that the Prairie Heights had a coefficient of 17.57, Crenshaw 9.12. Therefore, there is greater risk, there is a greater uncertainty of receiving the expected cash flow of 90 from Palmer Heights than there would be from Crenshaw Village because Crenshaw Village has the lower coefficient of variation, less uncertainty, less risk. So therefore, of course, the one with the highest risk would be Palmer Heights.